Today's episode is brought to you by Audible. For you, the listeners of Awesome Sunday Show, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. And all you have to do is go to audibletrial.com slash awesome Sunday show. It's audibletrial.com slash awesome Sunday show. Sign up for your free 30-day trial. Check out over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or any of the other 500 devices that they support. Might I recommend The Hobbit Unabridged Version by J.R.R. Tolkien. Forget the movies. Listen to the audiobook. They have 180,000 to choose from. Promise you won't be disappointed. All you have to do is go to audibletrial.com slash awesome Sunday show for a free audiobook download with a 30 day free trial. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring this episode. And today's show is also brought to you by BarkBox.com. You can get one free extra month of BarkBox at www.getbarkbox.com slash awesome. What is BarkBox? Well, I'm glad you asked. Every month, BarkBox paws pick the best all-natural treats and innovative toys to match a dog's unique needs, including allergies and heavy chewer preferences. All edibles are made in the USA and Canada, and 100% of the products are tested on animals. Uh, BarkBox is a great way to try different treats from local businesses, and each monthly box is also themed. Pooey Work City, Country Fair, et cetera, et cetera. And if the dog doesn't like something in the box, they'll actually send you something that the dog will love for free because they're all about the dog's happiness, and there's free shipping on any bark box within the continental US. And if the dog falls in love with something from the box, you can easily find it again on barkshop.com or just by texting them or go on the app. So remember, if you want to nab that free extra month of bark box, go over to www.getbarkbox.com slash awesome. You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Oh my god, you guys. Hey everybody, it's time for the awesome Sunday show. Welcome back to Awesome Sunday Show. Connor here. That was a terrible drum roll, and you did not deserve a drum roll for yourself. Pat here as well. Well, it was actually for you, because I did it after. Eh, that was still pretty weak. Yeah, well, anyway. You need uh, to practice. You have a lot of alone time. Just stop m- masturbating, and you can practice your drum rolls. <laughs> <laughs> it gives me my zen. It's okay. At least you're not Damien. Yeah, it's true. Well, speaking of masturbating and Damien, uh, we have a very special guest with us today. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, coming in hot. I think he means that you're better than both of those. Uh, at least, in my opinion, you are. Uh, well, well maybe maybe not masturbating, but definitely well, better than Damien. Well, here's the thing. I, I was I doing pretty good. I me with those two things. <laughs> I was doing pretty good, and then Delia showed up. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just kidding, Delia. How are you? I'm I'm great, man. It's uh it was a, it's been an exciting day, but also a little bit of a letdown of a day. It's it was kind of a mixed bag. Yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. I, I had nothing really that invested into it because I kind of already have what I what I want right now. But I understand where you're coming from, and I do have a few gripes. That being said. Yeah, so as you can tell by the title of the episode, we're gonna be talking about um Nintendo's Direct, which, as they were recording it, was earlier today. Yeah. And as you can tell uh, by the opening, we're all uh, super cool with each other right now. And, uh, you know, there's no bad blood. The reason we mentioned masturbating so many times is because the three of us are jerking each other off right now. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Except... I'm doing, uh, I'm doing it yeah. computer screen. <laughs> Delay is really lonely because he's doing it by himself. He's actually <laughs> doing it by himself. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I hate everybody here. But anyway... Um, uh, but yeah, the Nintendo Switch presentation. Uh, but as as we've said, as Delia said before, you know, maybe there might be some uh, some reasons why he had some ups and some downs. But uh, I think we should crack right into it. Unless uh, Pat, is there anything you have to say? No, I mean, I think overall it was fine. There yeah. were things that were left out 
that disappointed me that they were left out. Right. Uh, very much. I feel like there's a small group out there that mm-hmm. may have loved this direct. Yes. I, I like. I should. I should clarify. Like, it, there was nothing wrong with what they showed. The problem was what wasn't it. Absolutely. Like that was that was a thing. Not and, and not that I expected all of the mm-hmm. things that weren't in it to be in it. But that was that was really like what my thing. Everything that they showed was really cool. It's like the first time Pat found a wiener. He was like, "Oh, everything's really cool." <laughs> I just put it right in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even have time to think about it. <laughs> yeah, he just went right for it. <laughs> I'm very ribs, flexible. He had his bottom ribs removed, like Marilyn Manson. No, I just went right for it. Didn't even <laughs> wow. need that. Yeah. All right, Anson. Since you're the guest, why don't you? Give uh, your overall impression of it, and then the highlights, and then lowlights of what you think about the direct today. So, yeah, like like I was saying, you know, it's it, it was super exciting because Nintendo hasn't done one of these in several months. I think I read somewhere that it was the longest they've ever gone between directs ever. Uh, so when they announced that it was happening uh, early yesterday. Uh, it, you know, I just like everyone else on the internet who's a Nintendo fan, like I was just stoked immediately because I couldn't wait to see what they were going to show. And uh, a lot of what they showed was expected. Um, they announced some things that were either like long rumored or that we de- knew for sure were coming. Um, a lot of release dates that we didn't know about. Uh, and then they showed a lot of, uh, they showed a deeper look on Fire Emblem, which was probably highlight for me because i am so excited for the new fire emblem game and it sounds really awesome uh that was definitely probably the the highest of the high points and then i think you know the lowest point like i said was just the things that weren't there like there was nothing about animal crossing there was nothing about pokemon not that i expected either of those to definitely be there well, like, I expected Animal Crossing. Not I that didn't I didn't expect Animal Crossing more so yeah. than Pokemon. Yeah, I didn't expect Pokemon at all. Right. Um, Luigi's Mansion, not nothing. Uh, there was there. We still don't have any clue about what Retro has been doing for the last couple of years, and I, I, I assumed that because of the news that they were being handed development of Metroid Prime Four, that we were going to find out, you know, what they've been working on since oh, Donkey Kong. We're not, we're not finding anything about that. I don't think until twenty twenty, dude. Like no, I, I'm, I, I, yeah. I, I'm talking about the thing that they've been working on since Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Oh, because true. Okay. The reason the reason why I thought there was a, re- a real chance was because now that we know they're doing Metroid Prime Four, like whatever they've been doing for the last several years, like has to be coming soon, right? Because they wouldn't just abandon it. I hope it's a third Donkey Kong Country. Do we know what it, like the if rumor, there's any rumors? The rumor is that it's a Star Fox racing game. Oh, I think that's a great idea, and I think Retro can do it. So, uh, but that's you know we don't know what they've been doing. So I, I was hoping we might find out during this presentation, but obviously we didn't. Um, but yeah, so and that was really that was really it. It was I mean overall it was a good it was a good presentation with a lot of news in it. Yeah, I agree. Um, the Fire Emblem, uh, aka Harry Potter, uh, <laughs> looked really interesting actually. <laughs> Uh, I think it looks very cool. I, I don't, couldn't tell you the last Fire Emblem game I played, um, but it did look really cool. I really like the graphics and the art style on it. I think it's a interesting concept what they're going for, um, and you know, really building and continuing that strategic uh, like grid based RPG game. Yeah. Uh, the biggest surprise for me, in terms of what was announced, was the remake of the Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. Yeah, that actually, I, I remember, I've been reading rumors about uh, about that happening, so I, I wasn't totally shocked about it, um, but I it was still really cool to see it. So I'm not shocked by the game, because I knew there was going to be a Zelda remake, it's just been kind of the trend that Nintendo's been doing between, like, main games. Uh, not that, I, I don't want to say I knew. Because I, I, I'm that's I, I'm not a psychic. I was just kind of like, if I had to bet, there's probably gonna be a Zelda remake. Like, just like if they're gonna do like a fucking like out of nowhere, because they always do one of those like one more thing, you know? Yeah. To like kind of get it, you know, it's it's essentially not a surprise anymore. It's kind of like a Marvel um, end credits uh, scene now. It's just kind of expected. But uh, I would I would 
what made me uh, flabbergasted about the announcement, though, was the art style and of the remake and how it looks. And I cannot wait uh, to play this game. Yeah, it looks like you know what it reminds me of. It reminds me a lot of that. You remember that game on PS3 that was called? It was called 3D Dot Game Heroes. No, uh, it was like a it was like a Zelda it was like a Zelda clone that was all done up in like almost like Minecraft style, like 3d pixel graphics. Sounds appealing. But uh, yeah, no, it was really cool. Um, but like it had almost, it had this, a similar feel to what they showed of the Link's Awakening remake. Obviously that isn't done in Minecraft graphics, but um, it did remind me of that. My, you know, I was, I was talking to Pat about this earlier and a bunch of other people. Like I, I think it's really awesome that they're doing a Zelda game like that, but I wish that they had done a new game in that same, with that same, like a new story with that same art style, the same top down setup. Like I, I love yeah. it. I just wish that it wasn't a game I've already played. True. And I, I get it. Um, and it, I kind of agree in a sense. I'm happy this exists. Like I, I, I'm not oh, mad at it. No, all. I'm not mad yeah. about it. I just wish that but, it like, like they could have done a link between worlds style, like a sequel to Link's Awakening. Well, that's what I was thinking too. Like, like a link's, like you know how like it was a link between, uh, yeah, like a link to the past, a link between worlds. Yeah. It was like this is a pseudo sequel in a sense. Right. Like they could have done that exact yeah. same thing with this art style for the Switch, and I would have been thrilled about it. But as it stands, like I probably don't think I'm even going to get it because I've played <clears throat> Link's Awakening. Unless there's like a lot of different content. No, I'm playing this. I don't care. I played Link's Link Awakening too. I love Link's and... Awakening, but like I played it already. Yeah, but there's no way I'm not getting this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna get it because I don't know the last time I played that's not a fucking bitch. Well, yeah, also because I'm not a bitch, so I'm obviously gonna fucking get it. Uh, plus that art style and the the top down, it looks awesome. Yeah, it looks amazing. Uh, that was really eye catching and unique, and I think that they kind of, you know, Breath of the Wild had a very unique or has a very unique art style, and you know, they kind of mix up the art style. Uh, it seems like you know every release or every couple of releases. Which I think is very cool, especially for a game that, you know, is bouncing all over the place in terms of years and then timelines and stuff. So it kind of fits. But I think it looks cool. So I'm not upset that it's, uh, you know, a remake. Uh, I think that of all the remakes, I didn't expect Link's Awakening to be one that was going to be remade. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't, I, I couldn't guess it. I was just guessing, like, like, to clarify my statement, like, I was just yeah, guessing no, what, that was, that there would be a one. Zelda remake. Yeah. Which, you're right, that is kind of a pattern. So it's not the fact that they announced the remake. It's the one that they announced yes, they were yeah. remaking that was... Uh, I probably surprising. wouldn't have guessed that one, actually. I was thinking yeah, maybe like, they would have gone for... Like, like the like, oh, like do an OG Legend of Zelda yeah. like, remake. Uh, kind of the way they... Kind of like the, the way they did... Um, I don't know. Uh, what's a 2D to 3D remake that, like, that was uh, received very well? Because like I, the first thing that came up to me was like the Twin Snakes, but that's not really a two D three D remake, uh, um, or like an update. Mm. Oh, uh, Metroid sure. Prime. Uh, sorry, uh, the Metroid Two remake on three DS. Okay, good. Yes, very good example. Um, I, I'm trying to think. Is there a Final Fantasy out there that did that? Like, is there like Final Fantasy three or something? Yeah, they, or they did four. Would... Um, actually, three also, but three was never released in the United States until the three D, uh, the original DS version. Right. Okay. So, like, there are examples of good, like, 2D to 3D remakes. Yeah. That, but also to keep in mind that, like, Legend of Zelda, it's a 3D remake technically, but it's not really a 3. It's not really 3D. It's no, you're it's, still it's still yeah. It's like isometric, top down. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just I think the most interesting part about it is that they're remaking for consoles a Game Boy game. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Something that was on you know the NES or Super it's Nintendo. It's like Disney remaking their cartoons into live action movies and in, in hi- yeah in except not shitty <laughs> in hindsight like link's awakening makes a lot of sense to do this for because it's not it's not like widely available the only way you can get it you could get it other than like you know finding an old game boy and getting the game that way was uh getting it for uh, 3ds off the virtual console so you know it, it does make sense that they would do to do that one. I also think uh, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons would have been an interesting choice to like package them together 
because one thing you can't do as far as I know anymore is, you know, the, the way you used to be able to connect them after you beat them and then get like the secret ending. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that was really awesome. But like you needed to have like two game boys and connect them with the link cable to do it. Uh, even though so you needed a good friend that liked Zelda just as much as you did. Yeah. Uh, now you can get both of those games also on the 3DS Virtual Console, but I don't know if there's any way you can link them digitally on the same 3DS. Right. So, you know, um, doing a remake where that was like just like a feature of it, like you do one, you do the other, and then yeah. it unlocks the secret ending, that would have that would have made a lot of sense too. But Link's Awakening is a, you know, a great game, so... Yeah, I mean, it's considered one of the best games of all time, um, not just on handheld, but just in, in general. And I mean, it sold what, like 10 million copies or something like that. Yeah, between the uh, original version and then the DX, the deluxe version they did for the Game Boy Color. Which is the one I, I first played it on. Yeah. Yeah, so it makes sense. Um, yeah, I just got this message from uh, Cassidy, though, uh, <laughs> saying how much uh, Link's Awakening sucks and how much of how how wrong Anthony Flea is, <laughs> and how much you and how the government and how the government ter- is turning the frogs gay. <laughs> well, that's just a fact. Yeah, the, the last part. Uh, so yeah, that's coming this year. Um, it's a nice surprise drop, and then you know. Soon we get our hands on that. They Nintendo uh, has an enormously stacked 2019, like way more stacked than we initially <clears throat> thought it would be before the presentation. It's dude, they're coming in ball swing. Yeah, it's kind of insane because yeah. they have another. Ex- the next, I think we should talk about also real quick, given you know the stuff we we always talk discuss on the podcast. The next exclusive that we should talk about is for sure Marvel uh, Ultimate Alliance. Because yes. they secured the exclusive the exclusive rights to Marvel Ultimate Alliance three, the Black Order, which is super exciting. They confirmed yeah. that coming out in the summer, and they also confirmed that Captain Marvel uh, will be on the roster, which isn't a surprise or shouldn't be, but it's nice to have confirmed. Yeah, I, I agree. That uh, it's going to be awesome. Looks awesome. Um, and it makes complete sense why Captain Marvel was in, uh, especially because the movie comes out and like in a month. And so it makes sense that, I mean, Captain Marvel stock is just going to rise in terms of the general population. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, And she's a great Um, character. Tenfold. And it's the awesome comic book uh, version of her with the short hair. So she looks like a total badass. And I'm really excited for the game. Yeah, that's going to be great. Uh, Speaking of other games that are coming out soon, uh, they showed off more of Yoshi's Crafted World, including releasing a free demo today yeah, the first of it. Level. so obviously i downloaded that did you play it no i didn't play it yet uh when i left to come record it was still downloading uh but i'm excited for this game i think that this game looks awesome yeah the visuals i mean god damn they're just mind-blowingly good uh it it looks it looks like a cross almost between like yoshi and like little big planet kind of right mm-hmm. like, yeah uh it's got that same crafted obviously like because of the title, like that handcrafted look to it. Um, they talked about how you can <clears throat> unlock like little shields to wear and the, the shields are like, you know, hollowed out milk cartons and like, you know, stuff like that. It just looks really cute and <clears throat> adorable and like a lot of fun. You can unlock uh, varied and secret filled levels and 180 different crafted costumes for Yoshi. Yeah. Uh, by coins. Um and then there's like front and flip side of stages, while rafting, racing, and everything. This game looks like a, a lot of fun. Yeah, it's uh, I feel like this is a game. I wish it came out when I was like 12 or 11. I mean, I would still play it now. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like embarrassed to play it at like 20 as a 27 year old. But like, there's just so much other shit, and I feel like this would like if I was at a certain age, this would trump over that other stuff i'm playing now you get what i'm saying one thing yeah i do and one thing that i like almost jumping off of that like one thing i think the yoshi uh series has been doing really well over the last couple of entries specifically like yoshi's woolly world was that they've struck a really great balance between levels that are not too difficult for like younger players but also, like older players looking for challenges, can can make the game more difficult by 
trying to find all the hidden, you know, items and unlock the secret endings and all, and all of those things. And I think that it's, 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 it's a great balance in a way that they've never fully like achieved in like the Kirby franchise, for example. Like I think Kirby games are way too easy, um, which is uh, by design. They are fun. It's by design. Sakurai has said that like created Kirby as a, like young, a younger kids series. Uh, Mario, for, like, where Mario was too difficult, you know, like Kirby was supposed to be for a, a, a less. Mario's for the men, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Donkey no, I, I like the Kirby games though. I, I don't care yeah, that they're easy; saying, they're just I'm fun. Saying, yeah. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying like they're they're. Oh, I know you're not. They're easy, but Yoshi Yoshi games have a similar um, difficulty to like base difficulty to the Kirby games, but. They have a lot more yeah. options to make the games more challenging that I also appreciate. With, with the exception of Super Mario World 2, because I feel like that game does get difficult. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I meant like the more, like the, I'm specifically talking about like Yoshi's Woolly World. Like I think that yeah. game was a really great, that game was a really great balance between not being too difficult for like younger players, but also giving uh, more experienced players like the option to make the game more difficult if they wanted to. All right. Yeah, you don't have to yell at me, dude. <laughs> no, you yell at him. You have every right. Um, so, yeah, that's coming out March 29th. Looking forward to that. I'm going to definitely play the first level when I get home. Uh, another big one was Super Mario Maker 2. Yeah, it's out. a sequel. It's Let a sequel. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think – I still think that Super Mario Maker 1, I mean, this, now that it's becoming a series, was a genius idea. Um, I played the shit out of that game too. Yeah, I think because – it's literally there's endless gameplay uh, replayability with this. Whether you build your own levels or you download some um, that were made by other users, uh, it was great PR for Nintendo because people were playing it on like Twitch and stuff and showing off that. And then just you know, just in terms of challenges, it just gets more people to play this game. And the replayability is great for the user. And then now that I think that it being on Switch. Is it's perfect on Switch, yeah. Um, because the Switch is touchscreen, and you know it's clearly better than the Wii U was in general. Yeah. So, um, and then they're including uh, new tools, items, features, uh, like villains, monsters, and all that. Stuff. I have like no reason to to keep my Wii U uh, honestly anymore. Like, I, I every time there would be a game that comes out, I'm like, well, I still have this game. I still have this game. Now I don't even have a reason to go back to Super Mario Maker. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you got the second one coming out that has yeah. a whole bunch more stuff, so why would you go back? The, the, you know what? I kind of wish they would make like a Zelda Maker or like, so, like something that – like a, not that Super Mario Maker isn't challenging because there are, it, it definitely can be challenging to make good levels because there are some shit levels out there. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Like, like I fucking hate – real hardcore super mario frustration levels like this uh, thing, yeah this thing, this, that, this thing is made like creating those kinds of stages like way easier yeah and to be fair like if you advertise that your level is like that then that's that's fine like that you're saying like no, no this is meant to be frustrating but like you know if i'm jumping in a level and like it sucks because you just want to be a dick like go fuck yourself but like good levels, like if you, it's not not that it's easy to do that, but I, I wish there was something that you could put something more like puzzle solving into, or like something that because like again, I like Zelda, I, I like the Mario series more than I like the Zelda series, but I feel like Zelda Maker could be more rewarding. Uh, I guess, like I guess, intelligently speaking, yeah, you know, like for your, like you know, just for your overall brain, it, it's like because think about how how much like how, like how much you would have to think. In order for something like that to come about, but I'm also how, ranting on a different topic. But how would that work for somebody like you that doesn't have a brain? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That, no, Zelda Maker is actually a good idea. But uh, what we do have is Super Mario Maker Two, uh, and that which I'm not complaining uh, about. No, I know. I'm just I'm just joking. But yeah, it is. It's awesome because there were rumors. I'm pretty sure. Again, like you know, I'm going deep down the the, the Reddit uh, rabbit hole here, but it's like. I'm pretty sure that I've seen rumors that they were bringing Super Mario Maker to Switch, but I think everybody assumed it was going to be just like another port of the original one. So the fact that this is like a full-fledged sequel with new features and everything is better than I think anybody was hoping for. Mm -hmm. Uh, And also, you know, my favorite part about this game is that the whole ability to use the three different art styles 
um, or no, is it four, right? Is it the eight? It's four. It's eight bit, then the Super Mario Brothers three, then the Super Mario World, and then the new Super Mario Brothers, right? Is the Yeah, that's uh, correct. So that's it's so, it's so cool that you can use all the four of those different eras and like the different power ups and the cat suit and everything. Like it's just it's so awesome. Like I just wish they would there. include the Super Mario Brothers two. Even though I know I know gameplay wise, it's kind of hard to include Super Mario Brothers two because it because it plays so much differently because it technically is a different game. Yeah. Uh, but I just I love that art style of that game. I just wish it was I just mm-hmm. wish it was somewhat included. So maybe they should do Doki Doki Panic Maker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So that actually looks really cool. I mean, and people were freaking out just because of the addition of slopes alone. Yeah. Uh, at which they let off with. So that, um, you know, satisfied a lot of people. Uh, also, they showed off was it Astral Chain. Just go through some stuff real quick. Yeah, box wait, Boy wait, and wait. Box Girl. Can we talk about Astral Chain for a second? Because I yeah. I am like, oh my God, this game looks amazing. Like, oh. It is it is the game it is the new game from the uh from the team at Platinum, uh a bunch of them that worked on Near Automata. The guy and that Bayonetta. Yeah, Take, Takahisa Taura, the guy who he was like the combat and gameplay designer of Near Automata is uh the lead director on this game hideki kamiya who everybody knows you know from platinum he's like one of the geniuses behind uh bayonetta um he's like in a an advisory role on it and you know it's god it's just so it's so awesome looking the combat and the graphics and i'm so hyped for another platinum game for the wii u uh, for the switch sorry and they also confirmed uh, that we have to wait a little longer for more info on Bayonetta 3, which is fine because this game's coming out. But yeah, like, I'm more excited for this game, to be completely honest. Yeah, I, this just looks so cool. Like, this, like you're like these futuristic police officers with like these weird, you know, uh, spirits that like fight alongside you at the same time as, as you're fighting. And uh, I don't know. Like, taking down giant anime monsters is just like one of my favorite things to do so i can't wait for this game to come out yeah also like high octane and like style like stylized action like that like devil may cry god of yeah. war like i'm a sucker for stuff like that <clears throat> i love everything platinum does and yeah, yeah i agree like that stuff is just it's right up my alley yeah that game looks yeah. sick yes yeah, i yeah, i does. do think it also looks sick looks <laughs> sick uh, real quick, Mortal Kombat 11 is coming to Switch on April 23rd. <gasps> yeah, uh, I don't know cool. whether I'm still going <clears> to... <throat> Are you getting that for PS4 or for Switch, Ant? I don't actually play fighting games at all, which because I'm bad at them. But wow. if, I was, if I was going to get it, I would get it for PS4. But like, I'm just impressed at how good the game looks yeah. on the Switch compared to you know like the amazing graphics on the... PS4 and Xbox One versions. Right. Because I'm going to wait, I think, until I see, like, comparison videos. Yeah. I mean, I I just play pretty much most of... I, I do all of my third-party gaming on the PS4 anyway. Like, I, I, have this, I have the Switch just for the exclusives. So, you know, that's that's kind of, like, what I what I would do if I, if I was going to get it. All right. Well, since, since, you, since you told me you're going to get it for PS4, I'll make sure you get it for Switch, so. <laughs> uh super smash brothers ultimate uh the th- version 3.0 is coming up this the, spring the no announcement yeah, i mean yeah it's no an announcement, announcement technically but <laughs> it's an update on an update yeah yeah exactly uh whatever uh damon x machina uh you get a demo today that game yeah, looks really did. interesting to me I just downloaded the demo as we as we as we started recording, so I'm going to play it after we're done and check it out because I'm yeah, yeah I'm just, to see how it is. I'm gonna download it actually when I get home because I'm I don't know like I feel like I've never known that I wanted to play a giant mech game until yeah. I watched that trailer. Right, usually just, giant mech games suck ass. Like think, they're usually all bad, and like and like I remember like during the PlayStation One and PlayStation Two era. I would go to fucking Blockbuster, and if I would see like a giant mech game that was like cool, like anime style, and it's like high action, giant lasers, you know. The only good giant mech game I ever played were the Zone of the Enders games. That's it. Those games were dope. 
But yeah. like every other, every other giant mech game sucks off, like hard, frozen fucking horse walls. I mean, Zone of the Enders looks like it was the main influence for Damon X Machina. So <clears throat> yeah, it does, and that's actually kind of why I'm excited like to check it out because it th- those games were th- even those games aren't even perfect. Though Zone of the Enders, yeah. uh, the the first one is definitely not has not aged well. The second one is good though, legitimately. I like the Damon X Machina art style a lot. Um, I just thought, like, I, the one thing that really, like, concerned me about the game was that in all the footage that we saw, like, since E3 last year, uh, the game looks a little slow. Like, it looks like it should be faster than it is. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but, like, your character movement and the shooting, it just looks a little sluggish. Maybe it feels differently when you play it, though. I have to, I have to wait till I play it. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, like I'm not getting my hopes up because like most other giant mech games suck balls. Like <laughs> you are yeah. really bad. Yeah. Like remember, was... remember the first off. Remember the Armored Core series. <laughs> I never played. There, for, games, but yeah. First off, there's four of them, yeah. and I don't know how any. I don't. I used to rent them as a kid. Like and like they were new ones that comes out. I'm like, why is this consecutive? Why is this consecutively just bad? Like, I, like why can't this be good? And <laughs> and I just I don't know. I I can just. I, I wish that I just want this to be good, but again, not getting my hopes up. Yeah, I, I mean, I want it to be good too. I, I hope it's good. I'm glad that they put a demo out so I can try it. Yeah, and uh, after you play, they're going to send you an email to do an online survey for it. Uh, it's still currently in development, but it's going to be launching on the Switch in the summer. Yeah, there has to be some level of confidence for, for them to put out a demo. Yeah. yeah and for, is, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Go, go on. I was just going to say, this is like the rare you know new ip from nintendo right like this is isn't this a nintendo game i think i'm not sure uh i can google it right now one second but yeah i'm not positive but um uh, oh no oh yeah wait Hold on. yeah marvelous. it's a nintendo game it's a marvelous first studio i think it's gonna be a nintendo exclusive but yeah, no, it's an, it's a Switch exclusive, but it's not. Yeah. Nintendo doesn't own it. I just wanted to. Right, they're they, just publishing thought, it. Yeah, I thought they did. My bad. That's all right. I'll, I'll forgive you, man. It's fine. <laughs> uh, so we got new Star Fox missions in Starlink Battle for Atlas, uh, Dragon Quest Eleven, Echoes of Elusive Age, Dragon Quest Builders Two. Wait, oh, the Dragon Quest Eleven uh, port is the the Japanese previously Japanese only special edition that was also on the Switch and one of the coolest features of this game which is so awesome that they did this is that at any time you can switch the graphics from uh the 3D HD graphics to 16 bit Super Nintendo graphics and play the whole game that way that yes. is so that's awesome. awesome it's so awesome like they showed it in the in the trailer and i i was like that is the coolest thing i've ever seen like none of the other versions of the game have that it's only on the switch version it's so cool like it makes like i i already wanted to get that game but now like i'm really glad i didn't get it on ps4 because i kind of want to get it on switch just for that reason yeah that's a really cool idea uh I want to check that out. Yeah, and that's the thing I'm like starting to get like from these directs too more and more. Uh, like as, through through the years when they started when like when, when uh, during the Wii heydays is like when I talk about them, I realize like how cool some of the little stuff is that like you, you don't realize like how much like you kind of benefit from sometimes getting games on Nintendo on Nintendo consoles. Yeah, yeah, and this is definitely a good example of it. Yeah, and I, I also think that, you know, the direct presentations are, like, the greatest idea that anybody at Nintendo's ever had because they build up so much hype among the fa- amongst the fan base, and it's just a great way to speak directly to the fans. Like, Nintendo has such a... Oftentimes, they have a really good relationship with their fans, and then other times they don't, but the, the directs are one of the ways where they have a really good relationship with their fans. It, like no, yeah. other, no other company does anything like that. Right, and it feels rewarding to be a fan. Yeah, yeah. And it's to the point, actually, where like it's, like the, they take the word direct so literally that they fucking have an apology like video. Like, yeah, that, that wasn't... That's that technically was. not a direct, but like... 
<laughs> you know, like it's like you're there talking to <laughs> Nintendo Direct. Like, you know, it's all happy. By the way, like we're restarting this development. Like, <laughs> they even they do yeah. shit like that. That was awesome. I mean, I, I have so much respect for them. A for making that decision, which must have been incredibly difficult, and B like coming out and saying like, yeah, you know, like we're sorry, but like this is you know this is how it has to be. Well, who's the original developer for Metroid Prime Four? So we don't know. It was never officially confirmed, but there were rumors that Nintendo had an internal, a new internal team made up that was working in conjunction with a team at Bando, Bandai Namco. Mm-hmm. Uh, but nobody knows for sure, and now it doesn't matter anymore because Retro is making it like they always should have been in the first place. Right, and I'm just so curious. I, I want to see what that game looks like. Like the original game, you know, it'll never be shown. They wasted like over two years of development time, which is wild. Like they're just throwing it out the window, all that money and time spent, and they're just throwing it out because it wasn't good enough. Like, I, I mean, you know, like I said, hats off to them for, for making that decision because it could well, have been easy. And that's not unheard of too, because like uh, id Software did the same thing with Doom. Uh, because, and then we ended up getting that amazing Doom game. That was fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, like Doom it's not Four. Heard of, but it, yeah, but it's a it's a very difficult decision, and also like like Metroid Prime Four is probably like the single most anticipated Switch game, I think, out of any of the Switch games. That's like, I feel like Metroid Prime Four because what year it's it's 2019. Oh no, I was gonna I was thinking like maybe like Metroid Prime Four would be like a swan song for the Switch, like as if like it would be like okay, this is like the last major, but yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah I don't now think it will be. be. No, now it might be. I mean, bless you, but <laughs> no, thank you. Two, like, two years from now, because that means the Switch would only be around for like three years. Or I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's gonna come out until 2022 at the earliest. Yeah, because you got they're starting over like they just started over, and that game's going to take at least probably three years to make. I would say, <clears throat> like they just yeah. started, they just started over like a month ago, you know, or whatever. Like it's it's got to be at least three years out. But keep in mind, now the hype is real. No, but look. The hype is real. The hype was always real, but now it's the hype is insane now that Retro is doing it. Yeah, and it's like there's a lot riding on this game. And I think that's another reason why they may have made that other previous video about – because yeah, I think had, they know what they're – like with this with like the severity. <laughs> the, the problem was everybody – well, there, there, there were two reasons. Every for The first reason is that since – the game was announced. We haven't heard anything about it. And everybody has been insanely like clamoring for more information. And then they realized like, Oh shit. Like we have a d- direct that we want to do, but we can't have a direct without Metroid news because people will freak the F out if we have another direct without Metroid news. Yeah. So, so they were like, before we do this direct a couple of weeks early in advance, we're going to put out this video. We're going to calmly explain everything and hope everybody takes it the right way. And luckily, that you know, everybody did because that was the right decision. You know, the I did it. I, I fucked them. All right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's like Miyamoto always says. What does he say? Uh, a, a delayed game will uh, could, will eventually be good, but a but a rushed game will always be bad or whatever. Right? I, I it's that. something like that. Yeah, that, I mean uh, that's ba- the basic point of it. Whether it's that yeah. exact phrasing or not. Well, he's listening right now, so you better get it right. A delayed, a delayed game is eventually good. A bad game is bad forever. There you so, go. so you know that that is a great philosophy to have. And you know, it the problem that developers and publishers get into is when they do that stuff without telling the fans and explaining it to them <clears> calmly. So the fact that Nintendo realized that the best course of action was to let us know, but also keep in happened. mind, keep in mind too, the fact that they have to explain it calmly kind of says, says things. Well, <laughs> I mean, the gaming community is very, very entitled and toxic. Yeah, right. So, but, this, but shockingly, they took this news very well because of the way it was conveyed. In my opinion, yeah, I think it it has most to do with that, and then the fact that they're like, all right, well. You know, if they're going back to stage one, it's for good reason. 
Right. And everybody is happy that Retro has <clears throat> it, where, which, again, they should have just been the developers from the beginning. Yeah, so I think that made it easier for people to accept and, yeah. uh, you know, be okay with without being, you know, cocks about it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good word. That's a, that's exactly right. Although, of course, there are people being cocks about this direct, but it's just, it's the first direct of the year. They're not going to blow their load all in one thing. You know, they're going to get so, mostly upcoming stuff here or save some bigger stuff because Animal Crossing is anticipated to be released this year. I'm assuming now that it's going to be in the fall. I mean, there's going to be another yeah. direct my in a few guess, months. My guess is that Animal Crossing will be in September and Pokemon will be in November. Which I think is yeah, a good time frame and it's something that we'll obviously learn. I mean, they still got another direct yeah. this year. E3 is coming up. Yep. They got plenty of time to show this stuff off. Um, yeah, I think I think that we probably won't see anything of Animal Crossing until <clears throat> E3 and Pokemon also E3. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a good time frame. So, I mean, they still did announce a bunch of stuff today, like uh, Rune Factory 4 is getting remastered for the Switch. Rune Factory 5 is in development for the Switch. Um, Final Fantasy 7 is coming to the Switch uh, March 26th. Final nine Fantasy is out today. Not yet. Nine is out. Um, Dead by Daylight port is coming to uh, this fall, which I never played. That it was. It always seemed like an interesting concept, but I just never uh, picked that up and never really looked into it. It was free on PS it. Plus a couple of months ago. Yeah, I don't know if I ended up pick, uh, downloading it or not, but I think it's a cool concept. I don't think I'll actually get it. Um, yeah, but you know. Whatever. Uh, Assassin's Creed 3 remastered is coming to the Switch, um, which has been rumored. And then uh, Ubisoft actually had it listed on their website yesterday, but then swiftly took it down. It's my least favorite game in the Assassin's Creed series. Yeah, it was such a damn bummer. Like, Connor was a shitty protagonist, which completely (laughs) makes sense because look at, you know, this piece of shit shit sitting across from me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And then the you know Desmond's story ends in such a shitty way, but the gameplay was fun. The tomahawk was cool. The revolutionary era setting was cool. It's just everything around it yeah. sucked. One cool thing about this de- mm-hmm. uh, definitive edition or whatever you want to call it, though, is that it also has the uh, the PSP game Assassin's Creed Liberation uh, included, yep. in it, which is which is great because I heard that game was really good and I never played it and I've always wanted to play it. So maybe I'll I would maybe I should pick it up just for that reason. I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I mean I'll see how much it costs. Yeah. Uh, uh, the developer of Undertale, uh, new game Delta Rune is coming to the Switch. Uh, chapter one is free. Um, the twenty eighth. I've never played Undertale, but I know people go apeshit for that game. Yeah, Undertale's on the Switch too. Um, I also haven't played it yet, even though I really want to. But I heard it's amazing. Another one uh, trailer that they released that looked really cool was for Oninaki, I think is how you say it. Oh, yeah, Oninaki. Yeah, Oninaki. I, was, I, I wanted to talk about that for sure. Yeah, that, so that's the team at Square that did uh, Lost Sphere and I Am Setsuna, uh, and it looks really interesting. It's, they said it, they described it as an action RPG, which is, which is cool to, uh, to hear because that team – um, I think, well, I Am Setsuna was uh, inspired a lot by Chrono Trigger, um, which, so it had turn-based battles. I didn't, I didn't play Lost Sphere, <clears throat> but I heard it was just okay, so I don't know. I, this game looks really cool. Yeah. Uh, when does Bambu Kaki come out? <laughs> Oni Naki. Oh, uh, sorry. Out summer. Yeah, it's fine. No, it's fine. Uh, I, that was a total accident. I get it. Uh, Oni, Naki, Oni Naki comes out summer 2019. Yeah, I mean, that art style was really, really cool. Uh, I haven't played the other games, um, but I know on Reddit a lot of people were excited for this based on those games. Uh, not going to acknowledge your joke. Come on. That was- <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that looks really cool. I mean, a lot of the new trailers that they released today all feature some really awesome art style, um, which is one yeah, of my favorite of the- things oh. about Nintendo games. Yeah, a lot of the devs do those interesting art styles to get around the fact that Nintendo's consoles are always underpowered compared to the others. So it, it's really great what we see come out of that uh, like relationship of necessity. Yeah, and you know what? And I'm fine with that because no, I am too. It's probably more visually appealing 
uh, mm -hmm. depending on the game. The stylized graphic styles always hold up way better than others. Like you look at the uh, you look at the GameCube PS2 generation. Like, what's one game that still holds up to this day visually? The Wind Waker, because of the art style that everybody hated when it was announced. And now, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, in I hindsight, remember that. that game still looks amazing. The original GameCube version, let alone the HD re remaster, but the original GameCube version looks amazing still. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and speaking of which, like, I wish um, they would have announced more virtual console things for Switch. I feel like that's something that's lacking. Yeah, the fact that they don't have the virtual console on the Switch and that I think is a real bummer. When I got it, I was um, or leading up to, it, I was like, oh, all right. When I get it, going on the virtual console, I'm buying so many games, and then huh. it's not there. <laughs> yeah, like, and this is an example of how Nintendo is not not have a good relationship with its fans because I just want to give you money to buy Earthbound again for the fourth time, Nintendo. Just let me buy Earthbound again from you for my Switch. Like, that's all I want to do. Yeah. I already, I already and like, bought it on I, Wii U and on 3DS and, you know, whatever. Like, I just, like, let me buy it again. Yeah, exactly. And then, like, I missed a lot of Zelda games that I would happily buy for the Switch, I mean, amongst others, there's, you know, tons more games. Like, especially if they introduced yeah. a bunch of GameCube titles. Yes. Like Mario Sunshine yeah. or just any number of GameCube titles that were awesome. Or N64, anything. doesn't matter. I'll, be, I'll buy fucking, you know, Super Nintendo games all over again. I cannot believe that <clears throat> they haven't yet brought over uh, Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD to the Switch. Yeah, like, and it's I, crazy I because... I can't believe it. The amount of switches that have already sold, and just how fast that they keep selling—it's insane. It's insane that they haven't brought that over to the Switch yet. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like such a no-brainer, especially considering like the sheer number of games that they ported over from the Wii U, like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze mm -hmm. and New Super Mario Brothers U, and I mean, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is essentially just Smash Four with more with all of the characters. Um, and uh, Splatoon Two is just Splatoon, like just more Splatoon. Yeah, you know a Mario Kart. Uh, you know, it's just the complete Splatoon. edition of. Yeah, like all of these ports from the Wii U and the <clears throat> one, the the two games that aren't being brought over are the Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD remasters. I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, and like the you know the NES Online is a good idea, but they're only releasing two games a month every now and then. Granted, they released Super Mario uh, Bros. 2 today, which is cool. Or that is cool. The other day or something like that. But, like, they should do more with that. Not release yeah. two games at a time. You know, PlayStation Now, look at that. There's a massive amount of games on there. Or Xbox Game Pass also. Yeah. And they update, you know, several games a month or sometimes a week. It depends. Yeah. But the, the lack of virtual console is my biggest gripe with the Switch. Yeah, and... You know, well, you know, my 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 great idea, right, is that they should come out with the Legend of Zelda Land, Sea, and Air trilogy and do Twilight Princess Wind Waker HD remaster, and then for the first time ever, Skyward Sword HD remaster also, and call it the the Land, Sea, and Air trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so awesome if they did that. Uh, yeah. You better copyright that right now. Isn't that a good idea? They'd have to they'd have to do an HD remaster of Skyward Sword first. Yeah. Which I think would be a great idea with the Switch. And yeah. do did you more of a sense of I'm sorry, what? No, I was just saying, did you guys play Skyward Sword? I uh, didn't because I didn't have a Wii. Uh Becca did, uh, but she was never into Zelda. So. I liked it a lot more than most people. I I did too, man. I, I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I it wasn't as good as Twilight Princess, but I did think it was way better than the reputation that it got, and I would like to see it remastered because I love its art style. Yeah, I wish if Twilight Princess had the gameplay of Skyward Sword, it would have been perfect. Yeah, I, I just love that. I love that Skyward Sword art style, and I would love to see it done again in HD. Yeah, I also like the boss battles too in Skyward Sword. While there wasn't as many as there was in Twilight Princess, it, it I don't know, the game was definitely engaging enough, and it also like yeah, it was it, it had its moments of kind of like dullness, but. Overall, I it just yeah. Well, it just was too linear, like in the exploration sections. But like, I thought the dungeons were cool, and yeah, the bosses, and I love the flying and everything. Like, I don't know. I, I thought it was a good game. I I would like to see it remade. 
Yeah, and I feel like if it was remade, I feel like people would probably <laughs> shed better light on it. Yeah, yeah, I bet you I bet you that like more people would probably well, first of all, more people would get to play it, like Pat didn't mm-hmm. get to play it the first time. And then second of all, I yeah, I, I think maybe people might look on it more favorably if they remade it. Yeah, I oh. think it would fit, you know, uh carrying over motion controls and with the improved Joy Cons, it would probably work even better now, but it would sell. That's the thing. Like, yeah, well, it, yeah. That's the other, that's the that's the only logistical <clears throat> problem is that you'd have to figure out how to do the the motion controls. But I guess if you used the Joy Cons separately, you would be able to simulate the nunchuck controller setup from from the Wii. Yeah, I mean, even if you have them locked into like the the Joy Con full remote or like even the Pro controller, in some games it works out. You know decent enough without holding the joy cons individually but i think it's something that they should be able to figure out i mean i'm not a developer so i can't speak to the complexity of it but i think it's something that would probably work out pretty well at this point yeah we also uh got a we got some switch footage of bloodstained ritual of the night and uh yes also got also confirmed that the game is coming in the summer, which I am so excited for. It's the new, uh, it's the new IP from Koji Igarashi, the uh, guy who created Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night, and uh, it's going to be a Metroidvania classic style game. Um, I backed it on Kickstarter back, like way back when. Like I feel like it's been in development <clears throat> for like three or four years. Um, so I'm really excited for that game to finally come out because I'm getting it. I, I basically already paid for it, so mm-hmm. I'm getting it for PS4, though. But I can't wait to finally get to play that game. Yeah, that looks really cool. Um, I love Metroidvania, so this is, like, everything. Yeah, I mean, Metroidvania is a great style of gaming, and it's there's a reason why it's stayed so popular for so long. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's all, like, the biggest or most important or most interesting things uh, although we did get Tetris 99. Yay. Cool. Yeah, Tetris Battle Royale. Yay. How crazy is that? <laughs> Yay. That's what we need. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's free if you have um, a subscription to the Nintendo Online service. Yes. Uh, which, you know what? Now I'm going to buy the Nintendo Online service just so I can get Tetris 99. Sounds like a steal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one other thing they did mention, they didn't really talk too much, or they you know, literally briefly mentioned it was Bayonetta 3. Um, yeah. But that, you know, nothing really to it. I feel like. Yeah, they just said, you know, it's 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 coming, you know, don't worry. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not put on hold or whatever. Like, because I think the reason why they wanted to make sure that they reassured everybody it was still coming was because, you know, they, they wanted to make sure everybody knew that Astral Chain wasn't affecting Bayonetta 3's development at all Mm -hmm. um or at least in in a significant way right Uh, so i think i think that's why they kind of snuck it in there so that they were like don't worry like this game's coming but bayonetta 3 is still a thing that's happening so you know i think that's all that that was yeah just another reassurance yeah also we got a uh i don't think did we talk before we got a release date for fire emblem finally it's coming out july 26th they had to push it back it was originally scheduled to come out in the spring oh yeah i I would I was predicting uh, a May release, but it's actually coming out in July. Mm-hmm. They had to delay it a couple of months because uh, they, it needed more dev time, which is fine. Yeah, a couple of months is not that bad. Though. No, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. I'd rather it. Yeah, I just get more developed. Yeah, yeah, and coming out in the middle of the summer is great too because nothing, you know, it, it'll it'll have a you know couple weeks all to itself. Yeah, and it's coming out with the standard edition and then the Seasons of Warfare edition, um, both on the 26th. Yeah, I feel like they're in that, you know, within the maybe even all of July, it doesn't seem like a lot is coming out to for great competition against it. Well, yeah, but other than like a bunch of other of these like different ports and stuff yeah. that Nintendo has coming out, but like other than that, you know, it's 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 it's. It's Fire Emblem, you know, like it's a huge yeah. high profile release. It's gonna it's gonna sell really well. Uh I'm not I'm just really excited for it. I love that franchise so much. We know you do. 
<laughs> you don't? No, I mean, I appreciate it. It's just, it, it, it was, um, it never really, it was never really for me, I guess. Yeah, I, 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 man, I remember when the first Fire Emblem came out in the States for the Game Boy Advance, and I played the hell out of that game. And ever since then, you know, I, I've been an enormous fan. Well, maybe you should marry it. How about that? Maybe I will. You know, I mean, it's been, it's been, it was 2003 when that game came out. I was, I was 12 going on 13. So <laughs> it's one of my longest loves. Yeah. I mean, it's got Sam beat. That's for sure. Just don't tell her that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, it, no, it does. Five years. All right, there's other uh, minor stuff like uh, Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker. I got a Treasure Tracker update, special episode DLC uh, coming. I mean, I didn't really – I think I saw a glimpse of this game when I was going through the East shop, but didn't really pay any attention to it. Uh, but I know people who like that game are excited for these Uh Never tried it, so I can't really say much about it. But I think it... Uh, I don't know. I don't really got much else to say about that. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about on this or anything like that? I feel like we covered everything that's worth talking about. Unless, Delia, you ha if you have anything. No, no. that uh, I, think, I think we got everything, right? I mean, we talked about all of the big news. We touched on a lot of the smaller stuff, like that's really, you know, uh, Hellblade is coming out on it. I guess that's one thing I don't, I don't know if we mentioned. Uh, yeah, that's really it. Yeah, I mean, we'll obviously be back for the next Direct and E3 and everything like that. Um, Anthony, thank you for joining us once again for your 21st time. Yeah, no, 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 no problem. I'm always down to talk gaming in general and Nintendo specifically because I'm a huge fan like you guys both are. Connor, you didn't want to make that drinking joke this time? What drinking joke? Last time Anthony oh, was on, you're like, oh, one more time, you'll be legally oh, able to drink dude, with us. You, you have a better memory than I do. Um, it's because I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, Delia, you can now officially drink next time you come on the Awesome Sunday Show. Nice. And nobody else is ever allowed to do that? No. Nah, until they get to 21. Not even close. Well, not unless we're trying to do things with them, but... Oh, but then they're not willingly good. drinking. Yeah. They get the, the Jesus <laughs> juice. Yeah, they get the old Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. No. All, right. All, right. Oh, All right. All right. We gotta All right. we gotta stop with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> guys, you should watch Anthony on Twitch. Anthony, plug your Twitch, please. Yeah, my Twitch uh, channel is at the Ant Live. Um, you know, I stream most nights. Uh, play Destiny, Apex Legends. Uh, Going to be playing Anthem a lot. You know, different different kinds of stuff like that. All right. Take it easy, guys. Peace. Hey everybody, it's time for the awesome Sunday show!